Hello, my name is Stefan Cartman. Welcome to my studio. This is the fourth in a series of video tutorials dedicated to preparing and performing chamber music online. And it's an exciting part of the series because now we're going to begin recording audio and layering that audio into tracks in Pro Tools in such a way that we can begin to hear our chamber music ensembles come to life. It's also exciting because you'll begin to see how you can collaborate artistically with your friends and colleagues, whether they're in the same city, a thousand miles away, or on the other side of the globe. The way we're going to do this is by individually recording the voices of the ensemble one at a time. We'll record one voice, and then we'll record another voice and line it up so that the two happen simultaneously, and then a third voice and so on. And in this way, we will create a representation, uh, an, an oral representation of what our performance would be if we were on the stage together. And then once we've gone and done that, we go into a stage where we put video together, but that's a uh, subject for another video. For now, we have to start thinking about how we're going to line up those audio recordings. And uh, the easy and quickest way to do that is by using a click track. Now there's an advantage to using a click track because it's non-negotiable. If each one of the voices play with the click track and uh, even during rest just count the right number of clicks, then everybody should be able to play exactly together, in theory, uh, from one section to the next until there's some sort of tempo change. Um, the disadvantage of a click track is that when you play with it, you're reacting to the clicks and you're not reacting really to the music. So uh, the first person that plays with the click track has to imagine the other parts um, and still play their own. And then the other disadvantage is that it really is a rather, it really creates a rather wooden performance. There's no breathing in it. And while it's all well and good to recommend to a student to practice with a metronome so that they have self-awareness, that is to say they have awareness of the places where they drag and rush by accident, um, one can't have a final performance from that. It's just a stage towards the final performance. Okay, so click track. Click track is a metronome, and uh, let's see what that looks like in Pro Tools. Here I'm introducing you to my computer, and uh, I've placed a click track up at the top with the uh, timing set so that it clicks on every one of the eighth notes. This is what it sounds like. And once you get used to that, you can put the other parts with it. And notice that the difference between a click track and a metric is that you can mute a click track and hear just the music. Okay, so that's what a click track is. Now, um, when I put this together with that click track, the, uh, the first part was the first one that I recorded. And the reason why I recorded that first was so that I would have some moving eighth notes to play with. Okay, so um, that first part alone with the click track sounded something like this. And there I was playing all by myself. Now, the other parts, as they joined, were able to join with a part and a click track. So already it was a little bit easier for that third, already it was a little bit easier for that third cello part to come in. And then the other parts that had long notes, um, I could put them in there one by one. you've done that kind of work, you already probably, uh, as an individual member and as, and as a group, you probably already have some ideas of what you'd like to do next. Uh, you may like to take a long pickup at the beginning, 
or there may be a place where you want to allow things to move ahead just a little bit or hold back because you're going to a color change or something like that. Things that aren't necessarily uh, marked in the music, but things that would happen naturally if you had four people in the room together and they all had those similar feelings. Well, at this stage of the process, now that you've played with a click track and put together a recording, you can sit down and have a discussion about what you recorded and where you'd like it to move ahead and where you'd like it to where where you'd like it to hold back, um, and that would be part of the rehearsal process that would uh, take place on a conference call. Let's say um, one by one, we'd record sections of this. Now I'm going to get into how to do that without uh, without a click track because a click track we can just turn the thing on and play with it and it already starts to sound like something. Um, but the, the interesting and artistic part of it is figuring out how to do it without a click track. For today, I think we really should just lay down a couple of tracks so that, uh, so that you can see how it's done. I'm going to go into Pro Tools. Let's start a whole new project. I'm going to go up here to the File drop-down menu item and I'm going to close this session. Sure, I'll save it. Why not? And then I'm going to go back up here to the file drop down menu item and I'm going to uh, create new and it gives me a chance to name it. I'm going to call it Beethoven uh, because I have something in mind. You can bear with me for a moment. And here I have an empty edit window. In this window, I'm going to put uh, a click track. And so I go up to the track drop down menu item. All the way at the bottom of that is going to be Create Click Track. So there I have a click track uh, created. Uh, I haven't told it how fast or slow or what, the time, or what the time signature is yet, but I will in a moment. I'm also going to create a new track. And uh, I always uh, give myself a little bit more room on the track. I dra drag the bottom of that down a little bit. Um, I, I try to make sure I check on a couple of things every time I start a new file. Um, number one, I don't know without looking for sure that it has uh, acknowledged and recognized my audio interface. Um, my audio interface is a Zoom TAC2R. You can see on, on, the, uh, on the unit itself. Um, so I'm expecting that when I go into the setup drop down menu item, and I click on Playback Engine, I'm expecting to see that Zoom TAC2R in the Playback Engine. Um, if you don't, you can click on it and there will be some other options available to you. Every once in a while, it selects MacBook microphone as its default, but I'm, I'm fine for now, so I'm gonna say OK. So I know that it's gonna recognize the unit. Now that it's recognized the unit, I'm also gonna make sure that this track is going to accept audio from that unit. Now, um, I have my microphone plugged into line one, and I've already adjusted the volume of it, but I will show you how to do that in just a second. Um, but I want to make sure in uh, the input output menu that I have selected the interface and the number one channel, which is where my microphone was plugged into. Okay, now that I've done that, if I arm the track by pressing this record button, it should be that I'm getting a level out of the microphone. And you can already see that it's bouncing up and down on the level meter here a little bit at the bottom of the range. As far as adjusting the level of it, um, I usually like to look at that on a little bit clearer of a menu, uh, of a, of a uh, level meter. And uh, really the two windows that I use most often in, uh, in Pro Tools is this edit window that gets the majority of my attention. And then uh, I sometimes use the mix window and you can flip back and forth between those two menus, uh, sorry, not menus, uh, between those two windows by pressing command equal or by hitting this on the uh, window button. I'm gonna press command equal. And there are my two levels. One of them is for my click track and one of them, as I said before, is uh, my microphone. Now, if I gently 
tap on my microphone, um, which is right here. I'm going to, uh, hang on a second. Um, I'm going to see that level jump in the, uh, in the level meter. And as far as setting the level, well, um, I'm, I'm going to go to the top of my volume level on my cello and just play something really loud, some open strings. Okay, now that's probably the upper end of what I'd be playing. I can't really make it with any of the open strings. I can't make it go any louder than that. And uh, what I saw about that was that the level meter got about two thirds of the way up, maybe a little bit more. Um, that's a good place to have your loud level. Don't try to get it all the way up to the top. I'm going to do that now by turning up this microphone volume level. It says gain underneath it. So whenever it says gain, that means how much sound your mic is gaining. I'm going to turn up a little bit too high. And already I can hear noise from just the fan of my computer. I'll try to be gentle, but I'm, what I'm going to do is play up to the top of the level until the sound cracks, just so you see what that sounds like. Okay, let's go back to our level meters. You can see just, I'm not even really speaking that loudly. You can see that the level is going quite a bit up, and when I play loud... Okay, now when it got to the top, and I'm going to immediately turn that down because I just can't stand that loud broken sound. When, uh, when I got to the top, this red, very small red light clicked on to let me know that I had gotten above the maximum allowable sound for that channel. And I'm sure that you could hear that my sound distorted. It wasn't just loud, but it also uh, got very weird sounding. Well, that particular sound, I'm going to click on this little red light to get rid of it, to reset it, basically. So, um, and I'll, let me make sure my level is set properly. Okay, going up pretty high, but not high enough to uh, not high enough to distort. Um, when you set your level too high like that, every time you get to allow dynamic, it's going to go over the top of what the computer can accept and it's going to distort the track and you can't get that back. Once you've recorded like that, there's, there's no way to repair that. Um, so just make sure that you don't ever set it so high that, uh, so high that it's going to go off the top of that level meter. It's, uh, it's good to have your top level down a little bit from the top. Okay. All right. So now we've got our level set. I'm going to go back here onto my computer and record a little something. Um, Okay, before we do any recording, now that we've got our level set and we're recognizing our audio interface, we had better make sure that our click track is going to click in the places that we need it to click. So I'm going to go up here to the event drop down menu item and I'm going to open up a couple of win uh, windows to take care of that. There's the time operations window and then there is the tempo operations window. Now you can see the options that are available in here um, and also that we don't have the tempo or the time signature that we're going to be using. I'm uh, planning on recording a little bit of the Beethoven variations from the Fifth Symphony. Um, I have a student that's working on subdivisions in the, uh, in the theme and so I'm going to record some of the uh, 30 second notes for him. Uh, he should be able to play that with the 30 second notes. So I'm going to go down here and under meter, I'm going to set that to 3-8. Okay, I'm going to make my click an eighth note. I'm going to apply that. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to set the tempo to 88. And I'm going to set the resolution to an eighth note and the density to an eighth note. All right, let me see if that sounds like what I think it's going to sound like. I'm going to apply it, and I'm going to press play. Okay, okay, I'll go with that. And um, now I'm ready to record a track. I'm going to leave my tempo the same, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these two windows. I don't need to see them anymore. 
and uh, I'm going to take the, the cursor and get it all the way back to the beginning by pressing return. I'm going to uh, get that track ready to record. Now notice how when I pressed the uh, space bar, it simply started playing the click track. This is a good method if I want to practice what I'm about to play without actually recording it. Let's see here. Okay, so uh, so that's the speed. I like it. I'm going to stop it. Um, I'm going back to the beginning again. And now I'm going to get ready to actually record on that track. Okay? Um, you'll pardon me. I'm doing this from memory. But uh, I'll get a couple of clicks going. And you'll see that the red bar is showing our progress on the recording. Okay, here we go. to it back I'd like to just expand this view of it a little bit so that uh, we have a little more to work with there's a couple of quick keys that I'm using to do this right now um, I'm gonna put it here and give it a listen okay all right I noticed that the click track is pretty loud I'm just gonna drag that track down a little bit so it's a little softer. Let's see if that's any better. Okay. All right. That's a little bit more manageable. And, uh, and then my next step would be to create a track uh, so that my student can record the theme um, for me or for himself with these 30 second notes and hopefully get his subdivisions uh, a little bit more uh, consistent by playing with the 30 second notes. So uh, I'm going to go up here and create a new track. And there it is. Now, just as before, I want to make sure that the track is, uh, that the microphone is going to go into the track. Um, here, um, oh, OK, so already I see a problem. It says that it's going into channel two of my interface. Um, if you look at the interface, See, there's really nothing plugged into channel two. My microphone is plugged into channel one. So I have to go back here to this interface and make sure that uh, make sure that one is selected so that if I record something, the sound is going to come through my mic. Let me give it a tap there and make sure it's, yes it is, okay. So now at this point, my student could play this file or could just play the uh, the click track if you wanted to. Right? Just play the click track. Okay. Um, and uh, let me just try playing with that a little bit. Um, okay. I'm going to expand this track a little bit just so I can see it better. Okay. So that we don't hear all of that talking at the beginning. Uh, maybe I'll just get rid of that. Okay, so I'm going to start here. the track and uh, so as I'm doing this one of the things that you have to kind of keep in mind is there's going to be a definite starting place for it uh, right now it's pretty easy to determine what that'll be but when we get rid of the trick the click tracks later that's going to be more difficult and we'll have to make sure that we put a scratch track on there with some clicks or sounds that will tell us, you know, and a one and a two and a three or something like that. Tell us when to start. For now, I can look over at my computer 
And uh, again, let me expand this just a little bit so that the view is a little bit more obvious for me. Um, and as the uh, clicks come in, I'm going to see it progressing across there. I have this one only armed for recording, not this one. If I had armed this one, when I start to record, it's going to record over both tracks, and I won't hear that first track. So make sure that that's not armed, but this one is. And I'm just about ready to go and press the space bar and try and be ready when I see that my clicks are getting to the measure where I have to begin. Oof, I'm getting nervous. All right, let's try it. tell what it is. As I was listening to it, I did not start exactly with the new track. And uh, this is a result of latency. So when my recording doesn't line up exactly, and I'm going to go in here and zoom in even more, even more, you can see pretty obviously that those, uh, that those tracks are not lining up and that's why things don't sound right. Now fortunately in Pro Tools if things get off a little bit like that you can take this whole file, the bottom one, and scooch it over. Oh it's not letting me. Hang on a second. I'm in the wrong thing. Okay. Uh, and you can scooch it over until it lines up. So let's see and of course you could do this by sound and you can expand it a lot more and get even more accurate. But let's see what happens if uh, I go to this point and listen to it again. You know what? Let me turn off that click track. very interesting. Um, it was great that we had an opportunity to have the thing, the whole thing off by just a little bit because you can see where it's possible to correct it. Now people's audio interfaces are going to have different speeds of operation. For the most part they're all very fast, especially the new ones. But some people are going to come to the table with uh, older audio interfaces or USB microphones that don't connect as, as quickly. For instance they might uh, they might connect with a USB uh, 2 or older um, to, the, to the computer. And so there might be some latency in the system. And you do have to get things to line up ultimately. But fortunately, if you listen and you, do, uh, and you match exactly to what you're hearing, then if something is wrong, it's simply a matter of pushing the whole thing over. Obviously, we, it's, it's too difficult to correct little beats in between, but that's kind of the that's kind of the point actually. So I came up with some sort of a recording where these two things came together just by way of demonstration. If you were doing this in a chamber music ensemble, you'd do this with, with each track that came in until all of them lined up. And then when you wind up doing your video recordings, even if there's latency in the system, when you record them, the beats themselves, the individual beats along the way, are going to line up. And you'll be able to have a video performance of four people that go from beginning to end of the movement and match all the way through the movement. Not just the first and the last note, but all of the stuff in between. But of course, first, we have to layer our recordings. And the next time, uh, the next time we meet, I'm going to talk a, uh, more about how to put these recordings together without click tracks, how to wean ourselves of the, of the necessity to use them. And that's going to have to do with listening to the other parts and uh, putting your tracks down, 
um, stopping in places where there are long rests, like a, like a two measure rest or something like that. It's it's pretty much impossible if the other people have been doing any rubato during those two measures rest and you don't happen to hear them because you were the first one to record. It's pretty much impossible to land your, your next note in the right place. And rather than moving things around and splitting, uh, splitting audio files up and moving them around after the fact, it's definitely a lot better um, if you cease on that one track and then start a new track, listen first to what's going on in the other parts and then come in in the appropriate place. All right, that's it for now, and I hope uh, I hope that piqued your interest enough to uh, have you get into the next part, which is the more artistic part of recording uh, without click tracks. So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you soon.